Welcome back to Tune Into Nature. My name is Anna Hall, your co-host. I'm a senior studying ecosystem science and sustainability here at Warner College. Today, we have the amazing privilege of speaking with Dr. Alonzo, the amazing Dean of Warner College of Natural Resources. <clears throat> we are here to highlight the International Biodiversity Network Symposium that's happening later at the end of September. To get things started, Dean Alonzo, could you please introduce yourself and provide us with some insight into your academic background? Absolutely. Thank you, Anna, for the kind invitation. I'm Alonso Aguirre, as you said, Dean of the Warner College. Mm -hmm. uh, not new to the college because I got my degrees here back in the 90s. I got a master's and PhD in wildlife biology, and I'm trained as a veterinarian. So I'm very excited to come back after three decades and, and learn to the wonderful college we have. Yes, we're excited to welcome you back home. Um, so what personal and professional experiences have shaped your journey to becoming the Dean of Warner College? Uh, thinking on what's happening to the planet, to humans, to nature, uh, I wanted to just work with my sea turtles or with my dolphins or other species in the planet. Mm. But then you realize that you have to give back to students, to the community. And I think that uh, as a leader, uh, was a great opportunity for me to advance an administrative career because maybe I could change the system a little bit. So uh, I've been working in over 30 countries in conservation and sustainability projects, mm -hmm. many of them related to conservation of endangered wildlife species. And as you visit all those countries, you see the needs and how biodiversity uh, issues are so uh, important within those communities. Mm -hmm. And so that really inspired me to follow this international career, and then coming back to found the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation with the Smithsonian Institution. And from there on, uh, a great friend of mine sent me the job description to be dean. <laughs> I said, why not? I think as a dean, I could probably change some of the programs, some of the activities that we can provide opportunities for students overall in uh, experiential learning. And what we know Warner College highlight is that experiential learning and this neat community of students, faculty, and staff working together for what we love, and that's nature and the environment. Yeah, that's amazingly said. Yes. Um, how was coming back to your kind of like your start here at Warner and kind of impacting people that you might have like seen your younger self in? Yeah, so it was incredible to come back. I was nervous in the sense that I didn't know what I was going to see or find. Yeah. And then I realized that many of the faculty and students were still around after yeah. 30 years. And they were so warming, so inclusive, that invited me to their homes for a drink or for a meal. Mm. And I got to see several professors. I were my professors back then. So I'm still teaching to date. Yeah. And some already retired. Unfortunately, some have passed away, of course, but, mm -hmm. but it's just amazing to go back, like time stopped, yeah. and then you, you're here again. Mm -hmm. That community just you know, welcomed you back with open arms, it Absolutely. sounds like. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's lovely to hear. My dad um, was an alumni from CSU oh, and was, was in the wildlife conservation um, major, and so he, you know, Whenever he comes and visits and I get to show him around, he always will like point at his old stuff and be like, oh, that's, that was my office. And it's like- You, you bring know, him to my office, it'll yeah. be great to meet him. I will, yeah, yes. I will, he would love that. He's coming next month, so I'll do a little, I'll do a little yes. tour. Yeah. I'm sure like nice. he can come over. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, um, to dive into the meat of what we're here for today, um, the International Biodiversity Network is an eagle, egalitarian global fellowship of dedicated conservation scientists and advocates who have a key voice in setting the international agenda for environmental stewardship and whose programs serve as models for excellence in conservation practice. They address growing urban and rural key issues in creating healthy social, ecological, and economic systems by sharing best practices and the collective knowledge and expertise of an unparalleled international team of biodiversity professionals. How has being a part of the International Biodiversity Network influenced your beliefs and actions when it comes to protecting our environment and preserving biodiversity? Well, that was a wonderful description of, of this uh, small group of very important and significant uh, and well-known scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, let me tell you a little bit of background. Uh, 
One of my first jobs back in uh, after I graduated, of course I did my postdoc like everybody does at Oregon State, but from there I saw a job uh, when I was an epidemiologist in Hawaii working with Hawaiian monk seals and sea turtles. Yeah. So I was working for the federal government and I saw this job, International Wildlife Veterinarian. That's a good that's, title, that's a really that's neat title. That's what I want to be. <laughs> yeah. So I applied for a position and Wildlife Trust, an organization that came from basically England, mm -hmm. that we had the Wildlife Preservation Trust, open offices in, in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia Zoo, and, and I was the first scientist. They hired me as an international wildlife vet, and that's where I did the opportunity to work in so many countries. Mm -hmm. So Wildlife Trust had a little funding to support local scientists and embrace communities where you know the social, ecological networks are very interconnected to protect biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you see a lot of conflict between wildlife and people. Elephants riding crops in India, or uh, pumas killing people on a trail, as has happened here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So there's always that phase of interacting. Yeah. So the idea of the Wildlife Trust Alliance, when we were named in the past, was to bring this network of egalitarian network, really. We wanted to treat everybody the same as mm -hmm. part of this network, bringing the, their expertise together to solve the most complicated environmental and conservation problems over time. Mm. So we started our, our first meeting in India in 2007, and since then we have met pretty much almost every year. The last one was actually 2019 in Panama City, but then COVID hit. Yeah, that little And thing. I thought coming here to Warner College would be a fantastic idea to bring this name in the past, While I Trust Alliance, and because of funding, we changed names into IBN, or International Biodiversity Network. Mm -hmm. So it is, to me, a great way to begin my deanship and get these experts from all over the planet. So I'm bringing 16 experts from 11 countries yeah. to talk to students, to faculty, to staff, and get them involved in activities here at the college so they can share their expertise in climate change, in sustainability, in biodiversity, in so many interesting issues that we're really working at the college level. Yeah, well that's, that's gonna be really great for our college and especially all of the students. It's a big opportunity that will be really, really exciting and that I hope people will jump on to because that's, that'll be very fun. And then I know you just touched a bit about the history and background of the International Biodiversity Network, uh, but I'm gonna run into that just for, to give our listeners a bit of background. Um, so, the International Biodiversity Network was first founded um, when an international group of scientists gathered in India in January of 2004 to establish the Wildlife Trust Alliance, as you were saying, um, as an agreement among individuals and small-scale local conservation organizations designed to foster innovative and local long-lasting conservation efforts and to create a mutual commitment to practical multidisciplinary species programs at a conservation sites around the world. Um, so basically a great rundown of what you just said. Um, can you first explain why global conservation is such a pressing issue and what conservation means to you? So conservation is a great topic of conversation, mm. right? We always mix those words. Yeah. So I, I love that. <laughs> And so, so what it means to me is uh, really being able to work with these scientists for over 30 years, knowing how they grown within their own field and becoming experts in many topics of conservation, natural resources, sustainability, mm -hmm. and being able to continue working together as a very humble, very uh, group of friends, really. Yeah. Uh, we're very transparent. We're very supportive of each other very personal too. Mm. So we, we can become friends first and now we sit down in the same room and talk about specific issues of how can we solve, uh, how can we address climate and biodiversity? How can we address emerging diseases like COVID? Mm -hmm. How can we address uh, changing in consumption of natural resources? How can we protect species to the next level? So the idea is to be very, very, uh, to me, optimistic, mm -hmm. because our students are so thirsty to be optimistic. Uh, they need an optimistic view of how we're gonna conserve our resources. Mm -hmm. 
in a sense that, that uh, we don't present too many uh, success stories. And I want to show more success stories in conservation. Mm -hmm. And so these people, part of this alliance, are members of the IPCC in climate change, are, are parts of the government cabinets uh, advising in their communities. So they are all very well known on their field, but also when we come together, it's first as friends and then as scientists to address these complex problems. Yeah. That kind of perfectly leads me into my next little topic here, but I'll first touch on the, how you had said that you guys are friends and then scientists. Um, that's a big thing just in our little ambassador community here that we have at Warner is we always like to preface how we're friends, we're students, and then we're coworkers. And how, and I just think personally that really helps promote our efficiency um, and also just um, our overall you know, community that we have here in Warner. Um, and so y'all taking that to a more professional level, um, I think is really great and kind of is eye-opening into that, that realm of science and blending of humanity. Um, but kind of moving in perfectly that you set me up to, uh, but that one of the primary objectives of the International Biodiversity Network is to promote an inclusive approach that acknowledges and incorporates local perspectives, um, particularly those of underrepresented nations in the discourse on conservation. This approach prioritizes the voices of entities that have traditionally been marginalized and excluded from the discussion rather than relying solely on established and dominant players. Why do you think it's important to prioritize the perspectives of underrepresented nations in the conversation about conservation? And how might this approach contribute to more equitable and effective conservation efforts? So, so the beauty of the IBN mm -hmm. is that we are scientists coming from what I like to call biodiverse countries, mm -hmm. meaning uh, they are the what we call here in the US the developing world. We're calling it the low-income countries, but they host the most biodiverse ecosystems. Yeah. That's where all the wildlife, all the uh, species of trees, uh, uh, insects, mm -hmm. you'll find in great diversity, right? Yes. So to me, uh, being able to work on an equal way was very important mm -hmm. as alliance. Why? Because most of the big NGOs like WWF, Conservation International, and many others, usually based in Washington, D.C., will operate with these massive budgets, mm -hmm. but they'll trickle down very few projects down to the field. Yeah. With our approach coming from the bottom up, listening from the south to the north, then we're able to involve those marginalized communities. Mm -hmm. As you know, a great percentage of our native uh, people live in protected areas and we just uh, restrict them to those areas. Look at the Native Americans, right? Mm -hmm. We keep them in reservations. And we need to change that attitude and involve and treat everybody equally. So to us, it's very important to be diverse, inclusive, and provide that equity that we all need. Yeah. So what the, the difference of this group with everybody else is that, that we are equal, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter your background we have the same voice mm -hmm. in an equal way. So uh, the importance to involve uh, native cultures in conservation decisions by governments is key to success and protect species long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a big topic in a lot of my classes that we learn about is how, um, say, um, just like forest management, for an example, how you know native populations, they did um, controlled burns for large, you know, times of their existence here. Um, and then whenever white settlers came in, they, you know, would stop the burning of forests, um, you know, to protect the wood or, you know, their different ideas of what best, you know, natural resource management is um, and how that would have adverse effects on the environment. Um, and so gathering that more, that long term, long term and natural native perspective, I think, is great and should be, you know, um, bolstered in the scientific community. So I think it's really great that these perspectives um, and the stakeholders who have historically had um, say in these lands are getting their voice pushed up and, 
you know, at the forefront of these different communities. It was about time, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and then we define this as traditional ecological knowledge or uh, ecological knowledge or traditional knowledge or indigenous knowledge. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's science. And that has been the big difference of how can we treat our native people and put them on the table at the same level. Mm -hmm. They've been studying and learning about the land for centuries, for millennia. Yeah, they so know a can, lot more than yes. you know, these new scientists coming in. And, and so I like to refer to that as an indigenous science, really, mm -hmm. compared with Western science, and bring all what they know and apply it, as you said, to, to a real problems and they have a solution for climate change, for conservation, for long-term protection of uh, protected areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many uh, areas that can contribute and I think that's the whole uh, concept and objective of IVN. Yeah. Really support those communities working across systems at all levels and then being able to communicate with the government, with the politicians mm -hmm. and provide the agenda for a successful story to tell. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's great. And we need more yes. diverse perspectives because, you know, the more two brains is better than one. That's the whole yes. saying goes. <laughs> nice. All right. <clears throat> um, to transition us um, a bit more into talking about the event itself in September, um, con conservation requires the participation and cooperation of everyone in order to achieve real progress, kind of what we were just saying of gathering those perspectives. Besides including diverse perspectives, the International Biodiversity Network accomplishes this through public education engagement, um, helping to raise awareness of the importance of conservation and the ways in which we can all contribute to this vital cause. With this in mind, the International Biodiversity Network is set to hold its next gathering at CSU the week of September 25th. There are events throughout the week that present exciting opportunities to further the goal of the network to engage in public education and communication as an effective conservation practice. So, how will this event help to achieve this objective and what impact could it have on our efforts to protect and preserve our natural world for generations to come? That's a great question. Uh, I want to address first uh, that we will hold a meeting as we have done in the past, mm -hmm. but we never held an event, event of this uh, dimension in the sense that we never involved the whole university, and yeah. this is my plan, into uh, our, our meetings. Yeah. So this is the first time we're going to do it. Yeah. Why? Because I see the knowledge that this group can provide and the opportunity for our students to interact with them mm -hmm. and learn about them and get positive feedback on how to move forward. Also, I want to globalize the college. Warner College deserves to be known for the world. We're here uh, to support not only the local communities in Colorado, or the nation, but also the global communities. Mm -hmm. So I, I, when I was a student, uh, probably 25% of my classmates were international, from Panama, Argentina, Brazil, uh, Germany, uh, from all over. Now our number of international students have been reduced to less than 5%. So this is an important opportunity to develop agreements with all these individuals and their institutions and provide our students opportunity, and faculty too, mm -hmm. opportunities to interact and go and learn and have field experiences, courses, or do activities across at least 11 countries that I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, many in South America, including Mexico too, others in Africa and others in Southeast Asia. So we have them across the planet. And so it's a great opportunity also for uh, show Warner's agenda international programs. We are the only college with an international committee. Yes. So that committee has gathered all the international projects of Warner College, and I didn't know the impact that we're having. So I think this group can serve as a means to internationalize the college, create a great uh, vibe with our students, the faculty, and these fellows and mm -hmm. experts, and come up with new ideas to move the next 20 years agenda in conservation of diversity, climate change, and sustainability. So the way I see it is a great opportunity 
to embrace uh, and show Warner how wonderful we are, but also the capacity that we can provide and support to communities across the planet. Yes, that that is sounds like an amazing opportunity to like get our foot into, or I guess get our foot back into the door of our you know international presence, um, which. I didn't know that we only had 5%. That's a crazy statistic. Um, so I think this will probably do amazing, amazing things and get our students thinking more globally too, open their doors. Um, you know, we have amazing opportunities here just in Fort Collins as um, a natural resource area, mega complex, mega center. Um, but the world is our oyster. Um, and so I think this will help expand students um, drive and like passion and confidence into where they can go within their own careers. Yes, yeah. it's like saying to think uh, globally and act locally, but also you have to act, uh, think locally and act globally. Yes. So it has to go both the ways. So. Yes, that's a perfect saying. Well, I'm super, super excited uh, to round us out and get us all, or get all of our listeners who stay, bleh. I'm gonna redo that one. <laughs> well, I'm super excited <laughs> to run us out and to get our listeners who still may be on the fence about attending this fantastic opportunity. There will be a public forum featuring network members on Wednesday, September 27th, starting with some networking at 5 p.m. in the Iris and Michael Smith Alumni Center at CSU's on-campus stadium. We are also connecting members with groups on campus, like you said. Um, so if you have a club or class or any lab group, a uh, group of any kind who can make connections to get together or talks earlier in the afternoon on the 27th. So to close out this episode, I have one more final question for you, um, and that is, how can individuals and communities get involved with the International Biodiversity Network's conservation efforts, and what are some practical steps that can be taken to promote environmental stewardship in our daily lives? Uh, that's a great question to close. Um, as, as you mentioned, the events we'll be holding, I'm inviting all the university community to invite these experts into their classrooms, events, so they can share their ideas, talk to these experts. The forum is going to be very important. That's going to be open not only to CSU, but also our alumni, our donors, and the Fort Collins community. So everybody is welcome to attend. And I encourage you to, to learn just about the perspectives from around the world. Mm -hmm. That will open your eyes to new ways to interact with the university, to work with the college, and, and follow your passion, really. So it's a great opportunity for all of you. You still doubt it, just show up. And, and you'll have a great time. They are here only for four days, so our time is limited, but we're mm -hmm. trying to make the group as accessible as possible for you to get involved and learn more about biodiversity, climate change, sustainability, and all the aspects that are affecting our lives. So it'll be lovely to have all our students, our student groups get involved somehow. Yes, so it sounds like it'll be a, a big party, a big fun time for everyone to get together and hopefully learn some some good things. As we wrap up this fascinating conversation with Dr. Alonzo, the Dean of Warner College of Natural Resources and a key figure in the International Biodiversity Network, I hope you all have gained valuable insights into the crucial world of conservation. Remember, the International Biodiversity Network's upcoming events in September promise exciting opportunities to engage with experts, network with like-minded individuals, and contribute on the ongoing dialogue about the preservation of our planet. Mark your calendars for September 25th and don't miss the public forum on Wednesday, September 27th, where you can connect with network members and take part in these vital discussions. Our environment needs collective efforts and your participation can make a significant impact on the future of our natural world. Thank you for joining us today on Tune Into Nature. Um, stay tuned for more enlightening conversations and together let's continue to protect and preserve the beauty of our planet for generations to come. Thank you, Anna. Yes, Fabulous thank you. interview. Thank you. Really appreciate it. <laughs>